Well, hello everyone, and welcome to my workshop. Now, oh, if you've not been watching this series, then I probably really can't explain how I've got to this point, uh, but I'll put a link in the, to the playlist up on there so you can have a look. But essentially, I have marked on the body where the neck has got to fit. I've made myself a template, a routing template, and I've thinned the neck down. And I'll be honest with you, I cheated. I used the sander, but uh, nevertheless, it's thinned down. So in this episode, I've got to route the neck pocket. And of course, the big thing about this guitar is, because it's a hollow body guitar, when I route this neck pocket, and, and don't forget this is a bass, will this guitar, or this block at the front, be strong enough to hold the strings, or is the whole lot just gonna go bang? I, I don't know. Stay tuned to find out. Well, okay, that might be a little bit dramatic, but, uh, and I probably won't get the strings on it this in this episode. So you're gonna have to hang on to this series, but uh, let's get on with routing this neck pocket. As I mentioned in the intro, the neck was a little bit wide. Uh, I needed it to be the same width as this uh, template here. So what I've done, I've thinned that down, but rather than trying to plane it, I did it on the sander and um, I've got a nice finish on each side. The, uh, that belt sander is really quite good at doing things like this. It also enabled me just to sort this little piece here out. Um, it, it needed to be reshaped and uh, yeah, that looks all right now. So yeah, we're getting on. Well, I'll be honest, I was gonna do the routing yesterday and realized it was quite late in the day and I didn't wanna start making a, a lot of noise late in the afternoon. And uh, so today I've come out to do it and got completely um, waylaid by trying to fix a nesting box that we made for the, uh, well, it's great tits last year. And we've got a, a, an apple tree that's hollow inside and uh, one of the branches had fallen off many years ago, obviously, and there was a really great hole in it. And the birds were trying to make a nest in this last year. And uh, it was obvious that if they did, something was gonna get them because it's quite close to the ground. So I put this on with a piece of wood in the shape of the hole um, and um, made a hole in it. And sure enough, they nested and it was fine. But the tree has grown, squashed this thing, broken it. There's really great holes in the top. So uh, the birds weren't uh, liking it at all. So I've had to do a replacement and that's a right fiddle anyway I'm back now to do some more routing and here is my routing template and um, it needs to line up with fret 22 which is there so that will fit quite nicely just there so all I need to do now is secure this to the top of this guitar and fortunately because it's flat it should be quite easy to do I'm using a combination of masking tape and double-sided tape to stick this template down um, and that avoids the problem of the double-sided tape sticking onto the wood and being really difficult to remove so just double check that that is actually in the right position Hold that down. I did use, I, I, I used to use um, super glue and masking tape, but I find that this works a little bit better. It's easier to do. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I've just uh, have hopefully averted a, a disaster. Um, I'd drawn a line at the 22nd fret, which is this front line here. Uh, but when I looked at the, the neck, the 22nd fret is there, but I need to go four mil back because that needs to be the end of the uh, pocket there and then I'll use a router bit to get that dovetail inside the body so I've marked another line four mil back and now I've got to line up with that instead of the front one so let's get that lined up again yeah that looks good yeah 
that line isn't square there but that's square okay disaster averted I hope right now then according to my measurements here I need to go in 16 millimeters this is not the most accurate of measuring devices but basically what I'll do I'll plonk that down so it's flush on the bench there uh, get that zeroed and then bring that up to 16 mil which is there and screw that up okay so in theory that should now drop 16 mil right then well trying to film routing in any sort of sensible way always involves the camera being in the way and um, so I'm going to leave the camera over there in the corner uh, and you'll just have to see it from that angle and uh, I'm going to get on with it. Yeah, this, is, this is a classic Dave moment, classic Dave moment this is because of course I did all the measurements with the router flush to the uh, desktop here, the bench top, but of course I can't do that because I don't take into account the depth of the template for goodness sake. Right, brain in gear, turn the router off, lower the router to the workpiece, reset the measuring gauge to zero and adjust to 16 mil. Right, try again. <laughs> oh dear, 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 dear. I think I'm going to have to attempt another equipment repair because the little light that comes on, the LED light that comes on underneath this, it's just in there somewhere, um, has stopped working, which is a real pain because you can see what you're doing with that. In fact, there's two LEDs by looks of things. Uh, yeah, that's another job for another day. Okay, well, that's all routed out. So I'm just going to tidy up a bit. Well, despite having the vacuum on, I managed to uh, spray wood chippings all over the workshop. I've cleared those up now. So let's just get this tape off. A lot of bits there to scrape off. Right. Okay, I've got this rather silly little bit of wood here, which I think is going to have to come off at some point. Because I've only got a really thin piece of wood here, and that's just not going to be enough to support the, the neck, um, I'm going to shake that so it disappears, which will mean that the neck um, could slip this way. Well, I'm going to use the keel and bolt technique that I used on, I think it was the Great Guitar Build Off 2022 guitar. Either that or my bass guitar, I can't remember now. So effectively I have a little piece of wood as acting as a keel, <laughs> rather like a, a yacht and that slots into a slot there and, and it will stop the thing moving. And there'll be a bolt just about there. So that should do the job. Anyway, um, next thing I need to do is to cut the dovetail slope back there. Okay, so now I have a slope inside the body cut to that 14 degree angle. I don't know whether you can see this. If I put that there, you see there's a gap between the end of there and the, uh, the body. Um, and so that's corresponding to the slope on the neck, which is there. So the idea being that that will just slot into there and fix in quite securely. Um, I've got to do a little bit of shaping first. The main shaping involves squaring off these corners here because that's what's causing the problem. So let's get a chisel. 
push into that. Now because I've used the the uh, dovetail bit it's actually gone into the corners there so I don't have to worry about uh, going too deep with this. It's just a question of taking it off the top. See if we can get this neck in. It almost seems a shame to take that bit off, to be honest with you. <laughs> it is a bit of a flimsy bit. I don't think that would last very long. Um, anyway, well, that neck's fitted. Of course, this is only part of the story. I've got to uh, bolt this neck in. Um, I've also got to make sure that it is fitted in nice and securely there. Um, it looks pretty good, um, but it's getting a bit late today. I've got to tidy up, so I shall come back tackle this tomorrow. So now I'm going to work through my seven step process for fitting the neck with a single bolt. So here we go. Step one, mark a hole position on the body. Okay, so here's my neck bolt template and as you can see this is for a narrower neck guitar so it's it's a little bit narrower than the pocket there but if I line it up with a center line that should do the trick uh, that looks pretty good so I'm going to put a mark there now everything goes from the pilot hole I, I drill in here so um, I don't have to worry about trying to centre anything from now on. Step two, drill a two mil pilot hole. Step three, fix the neck and drill a pilot hole. Now before I do a pilot hole through from the body through into the neck, I need to make sure that this neck is fitted right up against that slope inside, that dovetail slope inside. And at the moment it isn't, uh, which means it's catching somewhere. So I just need to find out where that's actually catching. And I can see, yeah, there's a bit of material there that needs to come away. Um, so I need to do that with a chisel. Let's try that again. Actually, that looks pretty good now. I think that's it. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Now, obviously the strings are gonna pull this neck down into the body. So it's important that I apply some pressure when I do the mark uh, to, to get the hole into the neck. So let's see how we can do that. Okay, so here's my cunning plan to achieve some pressure on the neck. I've got a block here with a bit of uh, vinyl flooring there just to protect the end. That's going to push up against that bench dog there. And at the other end, I've got my shaped bench dog in the vise. So that's going to grip on the, uh, the body and hopefully we should be able to apply pressure to simulate strings being on this guitar. So. Let's see if we give it a go. Now I've just noticed that um, I need to push the body down and to do that it's going to lift it above that um, fit in there. So I've made myself a little spacer, put that in there. So now we're, we should be good to go. So let's uh, just tighten this up a bit. Take it easy. Unfortunately, this is lifting up, so I'm going to have to clamp that down. Hopefully that will do the trick. Right, push that into there. Make sure that's lined up there. 
and tighten this up. There's quite a bit of pressure on that, so I'm going to mark it with this nail. Get it out again. <laughs> Can he get the nail out? Yes, he did. Right, okay. Let's release the pressure. Ooh, that certainly released something. Right. Step four, use a Forstner bit to drill an indent uh, at the back of the body and I'm using a 20mm Forstner bit. So that will just sink the top of that bolt in a little just to make it look a little bit more attractive okay so now I've got to cut a nine mil hole in the center there uh, this is an eight mil bolt so the nine mil will allow some adjustment So far so good. Now I need to insert one of these threaded inserts into the neck and for that I need a 10 mil drill and I just need to work out how deep to go. And we'll go that it's gonna have to be 12 mil. I'll just check that it is the right depth. Um, that looks okay. I don't normally countersink this, but looking at it, I think it might help to do that. So, okay. right, let's see if we can get this in there then. Obviously, the trick is to make sure you go in straight. Looks pretty good. And now we come to the moment of truth. And um, it's, it's a question of finding the right length bolt. That's much too long. That one's a little bit too long, but fortunately I have a shorter one. Seem to be buying up these bolts, left, right and centre. And uh, I think that's gonna do the job, that one. I mean, I can always cut it to the right length. Let's see if we can fit this neck. Right. There we have it. We have a neck fitted. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> I love it when it starts to come together. And um, well, apart from the fact it's a squared off back of the neck there, um, yeah, it looks really good. Are we going to get uh, neck drop? 
Uh, I don't think so. I don't think we're going to get neck dive. By the time we've got all the kit in here, that's going to be fine. I don't think it's a problem with that. Oh yeah, boom, 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 boom. Right, I think it's time for a cup of tea. Just been having a look at the uh, sort of action here. I've put the bridge on the bottom there. And I've got the bridge set sort of really low at the moment. Um, just allow for some uh, height of the nut there. It's yeah, it's a, it's a little bit close. Um, so I may need to make some adjustments to it, but it's looking reasonably good um, considering I can raise the bridge up quite a bit. So yeah, not looking too bad. Now I talked about this being much too thin and it is much too thin. Um, it, it just looks very flimsy. I'm not even sure if it's gonna break off. Uh, so in order to make sure that the neck is kept rigid, I'm going to uh, use my keel method. So I'm gonna to need to take this off. I'll show you what I'm doing. You know, I'm sure you guys love how I overcomplicate things, but uh, <laughs> it's all part of the fun, isn't it? Okay, so let me explain what I've done. I've cut a little cardboard template out using my routing template to make uh, the shape there and mark where the, the hole is. And I've cut a slot which is 10, 10 mil wide and it's probably just about 30, 35 or 40 mil long. So uh, what I'm gonna do is mark that on this body like so. And I will just chisel out a shallow channel. I don't want it too deep because I don't want to weaken the wood too much there. And I'll just move this out of the way a minute. I'll now flip this piece of card over. I'll line that up with the end there. So that's where it tucks into the, the body. That's centered on there. And now I'll mark a corresponding channel on here. Again, it'll just be a, I don't know, probably two or three mil deep. And then I'll just insert a piece of hardwood, probably insert it on the body so that the neck slots into it. I think that's the way I'll go for it. Right, I need to do some chiseling and it's freezing in here. So I'm gonna put the heater on. So I'm gonna play some music.
Well then, well I hope you enjoyed that music because as I stand here now, I haven't even thought about how it's going to sound. So uh, yeah, I'm going to have to go and record something, aren't I? Otherwise you're going to have silence for five minutes. Anyway, um, I've got that little keel in, so let me show you. I'm calling it a keel because it reminds me of the days I used to do windsurfing, which I haven't done for many years. Anyway, all good fun. So it just stands proud about two mil and it's made of Brazilian rosewood. So nice and hard wood. And I've got a corresponding slot in here, which I hope will fit into there. So, this is the first fitting. Let's see if it works. And that is standing a bit proud, if I'm honest. Yeah. So that's not quite fitting at the minute, which uh, doesn't surprise me in a way. So, just need to make a little bit of an adjustment there. Right. So it's spot on on the body uh, with this template and I can just see now where I'm a little bit off just here. So let's clean that up. That's it. Should do that. And it looks like it's a bit off just there as well. I think that might do it. Let's try again. That's gone down nicely. Get the bolt in. tight. You know what that looks really nice you know I don't think I've got quite such a good fitting before on a guitar as I've got there that looks really smart and I'm so reluctant to get rid of that little piece there I think because this is a guitar that I'm going to play, I'm, I'm going to leave that on there. Uh, now I've put that keel in, I've ensured that the neck isn't going to bend down that way. So th th that shouldn't come off. I mean, it, I've just got to be careful when I take the neck off because it isn't very thick. But uh, I think once it's got lacquer on it, that might help strengthen it a little bit more. And uh, at the end of the day, if if I do have damage there, I'll just have to take that off and um, re-lacquer it. But uh, yeah, I like the way it's looking. So I'm really pleased with the progress that I've made in this video. And obviously the next video is going to be me shaping the neck, the back of the neck there. But um, I'm gonna leave that for now quit while you're ahead as they say anyway thank you very much for watching thank you for all your comments and um well please stay tuned i'll see you soon cheers